Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. It's Lemuria and Donna Carroll. And I am back after a very short hiatus. Um, to be very honest, I've been very busy the last few weeks channeling, doing sessions, readings, heart thread sessions, teaching, and just uh, getting ready for the holidays. So I hope that you're doing well and that you're busy too. Being busy is a good thing, I think, most of the time. So let me check the volume, make sure it's up. Yep, everything looks good. So um, I want to wish you all a happy holiday, a Merry Christmas. It's coming up. Of course, today is the 18th and Christmas will be in a week. So if you celebrate, um, it is the biggest holiday of the year and I hope you have a great one. Tonight, I thought I would bring in Archangel Shemuel. I found out about her, or sometimes they say him, uh, probably around 10 years ago. And it is an angel, or she is an angel that deals with relationships, healing relationships, and getting the most out of your relationships. So I thought I'd bring her in to see if she had a holiday message or if she wanted to talk about relationships, uh, because I haven't channeled her in sometime. Anyhow, I want to say hello to Angelique. Hello to Dion. Thanks for being here. I hope you guys had a great Sunday and I feel like I'm ready to go. So <laughs> I'm going to grab my crystals and bring in the Archangel. So at this time, I would like to bring in my highest and best healing and channeling guides. I'm bringing in the Archangels Gabriel, Michael, Raphael, and Ariel. I'm asking for Archangel Samuel to come in as well. And we're asking that she bring in a message for everybody. <clears throat> I'm asking that this session be overlit by the Mother Goddess. May my, may my words be clear, accurate, loving, truthful, and helpful. And without further ado, <clears throat> we bring in the angel. Amen. <clears throat> Good evening, this is Archangel Shemuel, and I am an angel that is known in heaven for working on the heart chakra and working on relationships, opening people up to bigger, bolder, wiser, and funner, more fun, excuse me, relationships. Of course, the first relationships that you have are with your parents or your caretakers. And those relationships do go on strongly to base how you interact with other people moving forward in your life. If you have loving, caring, and wonderful parents, you, as a human child, will be more extroverted, um, more outgoing, and also happier, more joyful, and more comfortable in the world because you have that, or you had that strong support, that support and the attention that you needed. And what happens to children that are neglected or who are abused? They get imprinted, but in a negative fashion. And so after these traumatic childhoods take place, 
there comes a point in one's life where they say, okay, I am going to continue down the road of anger, resentment, sadness, jealousy, feeling like I'm a victim, or I will make the choice to liberate myself from my early imprinting and heal myself. Humans that wake up to the fact that they all need healing in one way or another are ahead of the game. Those who perpetuate negative behaviors by engaging in negative actions that hurt others and hurt themselves go down a path of essentially disillusionment. Those individuals become estranged from their, their own hearts, from their very centers, from themselves. And so, of course, we always want individuals to heal their life and to heal themselves. And we will also say that for each individual, how they reach that decision, yes, I need to be healed, comes about in different manners. Some people start the healing process by spending much time in nature. Some people get into intimate relationships where they start healing one another. Some people get involved in group activities or work, their work, which brings them purpose, clarity, and healing. We want to say that humans are innately responsible for healing themselves. The truth of the matter is, is that nobody else can heal you in your relationships. You have to want to feel whole and complete, happy, and you have to want to feel like your life has meaning and purpose, um, that you deserve the healing that you seek. And so that is the point where many resources are brought in for humans and they can start the healing process. Your most important relationship, and this has been said many times, is the relationship with yourself. Take a few minutes, maybe 15 minutes, and look at how you treat yourself. Look at your self-talk. Do you take care of yourself in your dietary requirements? Do you exercise? Do you do games or activities that bring you happiness? Are you nurturing yourself? You can't really expect others to nurture you more than you nurture yourself. So as a human being goes on the healing process or the healing uh, timeline, shall we say, they become more acutely aware, more introspective, and also more um, able to observe their relationships as an outsider. It is completely possible for a human being to interact with someone, have a conversation, get their points across, but also stand back and observe the interaction almost as if they are a third party. It is important for one to step out of oneself out of the engagement or the conversation that one has with another and to observe it and to analyze it periodically to see where you can improve, how you can improve, and what you can do to bring better communication, more trust, more respect, and more love into your relationships. Sometimes people fool themselves. They think that they are doing a good deed or a good charity, a service for the other's benefit, when in reality, 
the purpose behind the good work is actually for self-aggrandizement or to better or um, bring happiness or contentment to oneself. Human beings have a foible, if you will, or they have um, the tendency to live, especially if they're unhealed, in self-delusionment. Human beings can be very delusional, especially when it comes to their relationships, their behavior, and their interactions with others. The more evolved one becomes, meaning the more their heart is open, the higher their frequency, the more they spend time on continually improving themselves. That is when they become humble and they become um, aware of just how self-delusional they were in their younger days or before they started working on themselves. We are not saying this to criticize. We are only pointing out that um, people look at relationships, they look at interactions from one perspective. And that is their perspective. It is rare to put, um, for an individual to put themselves in another's shoes. And if they did that after a heated argument or preferably before a heated argument, putting yourself in your spouse's shoes, your children's shoes, your friend's shoes, looking at your interaction with them, trying to look at it from their perspective, uh, it would take the edge off of many of the heated arguments or heated interactions that humans have. So what we are trying to say is that you need to step back and observe your interactions, your dialogue that you have with your boss, your coworkers, your parents. How reactionary are you? When you're dealing with a parent who is hard of hearing, do you immediately get annoyed when you have to repeat yourself two or three times? Think about the situation from their perspective. Put yourself in their shoes and see how you would like to be treated if you were hard of hearing and of an elderly age. The more that people can stretch themselves to embody the feelings, the emotions of others, the more frankly saintly that they become, the more loving they become, the more open-hearted they become. And when you reach that frequency of being a noble human, meaning that you care about others before yourself and you spend time and energy trying to make others feel comfortable, appreciated, loved, valued, and you bring good communication skills and a loving heart to your relationships, the greater and more loving and happier that you will feel inside yourself. If you look at the saints in history, they were not miserable people. Yes, many of them suffered. Many of them had difficult roads and difficult travels. But as they became more noble in their behavior, in their interactions, in essence, they became more content, more loving, more beautiful, happier, and joyful within themselves. It might not seem to make sense, but that is how it works. So the more you spend time on healing yourself and healing your relationships and treating as other treating others as you would like to be treated, actually the happier and the more fulfilled you will become in this life. Of course, the most difficult thing is to deal with needy, greedy, disenfranchised, angry, 
or as the channel says, nasty people. Yes, it would be much easier and um, more enjoyable to deal with individuals who are uh, loving, respectful, considerate, thoughtful, kind. But yes, we are given people in our lives who are the exact opposite and do not have these traits. And so in that case, what you want to do when you're dealing with these individuals is to clear yourself, clear out your sanskaras, your impressions, your negative thoughts and emotions, and get into a neutral state before you engage with them. And also what will help immensely is to send them unconditional love from your heart. If you don't have the ability to feel or do that with this individual, then call in me, Archangel Shamuel, and have me send unconditional love through you to this individual. Anytime you channel angelic energy and you feed it to individuals, watch them soften. Watch them become more loving, more helpful, more considerate. Watch them become more receptive to your communication. Part of the problem, problem that humans have when they communicate is they really don't listen to the, under, the other individual. You say something to your partner, you state your case, and then your partner retorts. But as they're speaking, you're not taking the information in. You're thinking about what you need to say next, all the points that you need to get across, etc. We feel that humans often energetically cut each other off. Just go driving around your cities and watch this behavior but you also cut each other off in your consciousness, meaning you cut each other off and start speaking when someone is not complete, when they're not done speaking. It is best to discuss something, especially something of importance in a neutral, in a neutral frequency. Don't go into a discussion about an important topic or even a topic that is triggering when you're already agitated. That does not help. Try to pull back, step back, get into a neutral position, logically think about the points that you want to get across and then go into the conversation when tempers are not heated. Also, please understand that the talking stick that the Native Americans utilize is a fantastic, fantastic invention. And if you need to, implement it in your own relationships. Someone can hold the talking stick. We suggest you hold a crystal and bring in angelic energy. Let's up that game. And then when you're speaking, express yourself fully in a neutral, tone in a non-defensive manner. Do not make accusations. Do not attack the other individual. Talk about how you're feeling and what you need from your perspective only in very harmonious words. You get or you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. And that is true. And then when you feel complete and you are completely heard, you may pass that talking stick to your partner or another in the group, the talking crystal, and then they can do the same and let them fully express themselves. Let them fully, <clears throat> fully be heard and then you listen and then put yourself in their shoes. Think about the situation from their perspective. Get out of your own way. If you take these steps to improve your communication, your relationships will improve. 
And we also want to say, do not shy away from relationships. It is okay to go into hermit mode and isolate yourself at times. It is good to contemplate, to meditate, to be alone. But do not shut yourself off from the world. There's great beauty in acting and reacting and being with other people. And how can you serve the world without serving others? Humans are social creatures and they need each other. Basically, it is good to go out there, make friends, pursue your interests with like-minded people, but also open yourself up Open yourself up to the diversity that this world has to offer. In other words, don't shy away from interacting with people from different socioeconomic groups, different cultural groups, different countries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Stretch yourself. Stretch yourself. You might be surprised what you can learn from other individuals. Make an effort to reach out. Part of the problem with humanity is that they tend to stick into their own flocks, just like birds. But the reality is, is human beings have much greater abilities to act and interact with all different types of species. And you do upon your planet. So once you improve your human relationships, we say, please also look at your relationships that you have with animals. Look at the relationship that you have with Mother Earth. Look at the relationship that you have with spiritual beings in the ethers. And if you do not relate to us, we have our hands open and our hearts open to you. We would like to interact with you and bring you good tidings and news from our reality. You are beautiful, beautiful creatures, and you have so much potential. And as you go through the ascension, as your hearts open, you are flowering, you are blossoming into even more beautiful creatures. Sometimes we are amazed at what comes out of the mouths of humans, and we are amazed at how humans can really Go for it. In other words, when things get dark, when they're really suffering, they can pull themselves up. They can bring in much courage. They bring in much bravado and they stand up for what is right. They stand up for themselves and they, in that way, they progress the mind, the heart, and the history of humankind. So if you're down on humans and you think that they're all liars and cheats, you think that they're all self-serving and egomaniacs, the reality is that they are not. Humanity is a very mixed bag and every sinner is a saint inside and every saint has the speck of a sinner. So we would say, look for the positive, look for the potential, look for the high energy in the people that you meet, treat them as you would want to be treated. Treat them as if they are God incarnated, because honestly, they are. So if you treat them with love and respect, you will feel that love and respect coming back to you. We want to bring this message at this time, or I do, Archangel Shamuel, because for many, the holiday season is coming up and they are dealing with their family members who drive them crazy. Dealing with the kids that cry and scream if they don't get what they want. Dealing with uh, many different people from many different parts of their family. We ask that you take a deep breath, go into neutral, and try to expend energy by treating these individuals differently this time around. Treat them higher. Treat them as a precious chalice. Treat them like a precious gem. 
that luster and shine is only seen in the heavenly realms. If you look at them that way, somehow they will become that way. And your communication and your relationships will start to shine. They will start to transform. And you will feel much brighter and happier yourself. So we say to you, thank you for being on the planet. Thank you for working your soul mission. Thank you for taking the high road. And when you haven't taken the high road and you lose it, forgive yourselves, get right back on the horse and try again. Humans always have that moment of pure potential, the moment where they can change their reality. And that moment happens every second. You are never locked into the past. You can manifest, you can change, you can create. You are magnificent beings. And so create and manifest that which brings you the most joy. We love you. We look after you. And we are following your ascension process in the celestial realms. Know that you can do it or you wouldn't be here. Know that you are a light. You are a beautiful multidimensional creature. You have many gifts to offer this world. So don't hold back. This is Archangel Samuel, and I love you. Namaste. And now Donna Carroll will come back into her body. All right. All right. This is Donna Carroll. <laughs> I'm back in my body. Archangel Samuel, thank you so much. I want to say thank you for being here. I appreciate all of you. I send you all holiday greetings, all of the best things that the holidays can offer. Um, I'm so glad that I made it tonight. i um, been running around like crazy, but I'm like, no, nope, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I'm glad I did. I want you to know that um, if you ever have any issues, please call in the angels. They do work miracles. They have worked miracles in my life and other people's lives. Call in the ETs and get the resources and the help that really can make a difference in your life. I'm sending you my best and I hope you have a terrific week. Take good care. Bye-bye.